question. Uh, the Interno International Advisory Editorial Board of Journal on English is a foreign language at IAIN Palankaraya and the core skills leading trainer at British Council. His works have been published in several publications, including Nova Science Publishers, Journal on English as a Foreign Language, and Information Technology Application Journal. His main research interests are education, learning approaches, TESOL, teacher-student learning, thinking skills, Gen X, Y, and Z, e-learning, blended learning, flipped learning, learning autonomy, education and technology, virtual and augmented reality, cyberbullying, and call more TEWL and academic writing. And he will offer to share uh, the topic, I can flock oral competency of Gen Z within technological, pedagogical content knowledge framework. Let's warmly welcome him, Dr. Henry Man Satosa. Thanks, Dr. Trung Lee. Good afternoon, everyone. Why are you still here? You should go home. <laughs> you should go home. It's quite late already. OK, now I will talk about something that you probably know. And then the. Oh, okay. Okay. I will talk about something that you probably know. Flog. Who knows flog? You don't know flog? Okay. That one. Before I begin, I would like to introduce my name. People sometimes pronounce my name wrongly. The first one is Made, not made. So for example, it is not past tense of make. Yeah. Dear made, for example. And then the second one is Harry. Vietnamese friends always call me Henry. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe of the pronunciation problem. So Tang, Henry. The third one is Santosa, not Santos. Yeah, I'm not from Brazil or uh, from uh, Singapore, yeah, which is Santosa Island. Now, everyone, please look this handsome young man here. I'm still young, not like you, Tin. Well, I would like to say thank you for inviting me here. It's been an honor to be visiting Ho Chi Minh the second time. I really like the city. Thank you very much for the university for inviting me. Now, you have your smartphone with you, right? Okay, I want you to pull it out and then uh, put it like this. Do it. Okay, thank you. Everyone, everyone. Because from the morning, we already listened to very boring academic, <laughs> no, sorry, very wonderful academic uh, <laughs> sessions. So, what I want you to do, please think for two minutes that you are going to record something using your smartphone video. You are going to record something, and the length is one minute for the recording. One minute only. But I will give you time to think for two minutes. And then, after you record, share to the one sitting next to you. And talk about it, and be noisy. Do you get what I want you to do? Two minutes thinking of what you are going to record. It can be anything. You want to record the, the flowers, you can, we want to record me here, you want to record the toilet, for example. I don't know. All right? 
record one minute and then share with your friends. Time starts now. You can record yourself too. You can talk. You can record the poster. Okay, when you finish, give it to your friend. And the friend, watch it and comment on that one. Done? Okay, talk, talk about your videos, uh, your friends' videos. Talk about it for one minute. Okay, now keep it for now. I will use it later. Okay, now go back to the slides and to me. So, I'm going to talk about vlog and Generation Z, and speaking competency, and also a framework called TPAC. Some of you probably have heard about this, some of you don't. So let's learn together. I'm going to talk several topics today. The first one is speaking as a competency in the FL context, Gen Z, FLOG, TPEC framework, research methodology that I used, findings and discussion, and conclusions and suggestions. In the morning, we have heard how Stephanie already talked about globalizing English language. The other plenary speakers talk about their regional context. Now I'm going to bring you to the Indonesian context of how to globalize English and also not forget to make it very contextual. Now, speaking. You know speaking, right? It's part of four skills of English. Speaking can be about a mastery, can be about a skill, can be also about comprehension of, of the skill itself. Now, you know that there are global issues happening at the moment. It includes knowledge, and then skills, and also attitudes, and also actions of speaking. Now I give you a contextual issues of EFL in Indonesia. If you look from this English proficiency index issued by English First in 2017, you can see your country here. Vietnam is a bit lucky. You are here, number 34, which means you have a high English proficiency. Indonesia is number 39, yellow, meaning low English proficiency. And then we have also Thailand, 53. Low, yeah? And even Cambodia, 77 here. Laos is 80, the last, which is very low. You don't have to believe this, yeah? But this data shows us that this is what happens in our context. And especially in the regional context, this is what our English proficiency, uh, uh, what is that, lying, 
at the moment. So, EPI told, told you this one. Why Indonesian students have low proficiency in English? From Mustafa, there are several factors. The first one is teacher's confidence. Second is, it's a part of social communication also. And the exam is very standardized, so they don't practice speaking a lot, but they memorize the lessons. And the issue of whether the materials is authentic or non-authentic. It happens everywhere. Now, people already talk about how to increase or improve your English ability to be able to compete in the global world. This is in line with what the theme of the conference is. So, diversity and unity, unity and how to make it globalized in the global landscape. Well, you know that we have to compete, but do you know that it's not competition is emphasized at the moment for our education. The word has changed to become collaboration. So you need to be better, but you need to collaborate still with others from the global landscape. Because now there is no border. Yeah? It is a no border regional context. It's a global citizen type of thing. So, especially in the vocational school context in Indonesia, we have general one and we have also vocational. Vocational schools, are ex uh, students are expected to be skillful yeah, with the competition in English, uh, sorry, uh, Asia economic, uh, what is that, community? The Asian economic community. So you need to be able to uh, collaborate with the other graduates from the regions. Do you understand that our students now are different to us? Sometimes we expect them to study like what we do in the past. If you still teach them like what you had in the past, then you are not considering the characteristics of your students. We have now Gen X. Before that, you have baby boomers, and then Gen X, Gen Y, and Gen Z. Another term is called millennial and post-millennials. It is said that Gen Z were born after 1990s. Me and some of the lecturers here are not Gen Z, but our students are Gen Z. They learn differently. For example, they like to innovate. They like to have startups. Yeah? They create, uh, for example, an application for calling teachers or tutors. They want to become CEO. They don't want to become a teacher in the public sector because not so much money, for example. They also are insistent to convenient. They don't like to stay too long in the conference zone area. So they always innovate, innovate, and innovate. They would like to be free. If they are put under a system, they will fight, they will resist. Now, let's look up deeply, more deeper, uh, deeper about Gen Z. You know this picture, right? Even from the womb, our baby's already playing with smartphone. It's the mom, actually, not the baby, yeah? Now, you know our baby can swipe already. In the past, I cannot do that. I play kites. I play a used tire to be a car, yeah? So our children are not like that anymore. Now let's look this one. Our Gen Z are familiar with this one, but not the lecturers. For example, Instagram stories. 
in Indonesia, our students like to update everything using Instagram story or Insta story. Why? If I ask them, ask them for example, why don't you have Facebook? And then they will laugh, ha ha ha, that's for old people. So I'm old. They don't want their memories to be there forever. They just want to ex express themselves only for 24 hours. And then it's gone. That's Instagram stories. The, word, the next word is ML. This is a very ambiguous word in Indonesian context. ML can stand for making love, which is very dangerous. And then if the parents don't know, and the, the kids say, let's, let's do ML, and then the parents will get angry. In fact, they mean this is mobile legends. It's a game, very popular in Indonesia. There is also COC, Clash of Clans. It's a game. There is also MOBA, Mobile, uh, mobile, op, mobile Battle Arena game. So they don't know each other, but they play game and then they speak English, even though they don't meet their friends. They also do curation, for example. Yeah, like collecting important information and then they build a museum of themselves. The next, the last one, uh, the, the last three I would like to emphasize. There is a term called digital literacy. So, you must be literate in digital. It is different to ICT skills. For example, if you can put a slides like this in PowerPoint, that is called ICT skill. But then if your students can put the contents into PowerPoint and then can explain that well, that's digital literacy. Another example, if your students can record video and then put it on YouTube, that's skill. But then if they can play around and then design the video and then use it for making money, for example, there is many YouTuber at the moment, that's literacy. Okay? Now, look, look deeper into Gen Z. In the USA, the number of Gen Z is growing. It's almost 25.9% already. And it keeps growing, meaning that your student in undergraduate now they are about in year two or year three. In one year from now, they will be the first gen set who graduate and look for jobs. If you teach them with the old ways, conventional ways that you had in the past when you were a student, they will not be ready for the future. Yeah? Later I will show you types of jobs. They also are multitaskers, you know this one. They can work through five screens at the same time. I ask you, Steph, how many screens do you, can you work at the same time? One, two, three. That's good, that's good. You can work on the laptop, you can also work on smartphone and iPad. Some of you can, also, can only work for two but not like them. Five, they listen to YouTube, they play games, and then they do other things, designing and so on and so on. They communicate using image and video. I happen to text one of my team member because I have so many young people in my team, and then I talk a lot using text, using WhatsApp chat base. And then his answer is like this, K. I didn't understand it, meaning I'm old already. It means okay. Another thing is that they send only GIF or video saying like this or whatever it is. That's the way they communicate. It's not like us anymore. Their time attention span is very short, like goldfish, only eight seconds. If you cannot capture like what I'm doing now, I'm trying to capture the audience attention then I'm, I'm, not, I'm not successful. You are, as a teacher, will not be successful. If 
they don't like you, they are there because you, they are Vietnamese, they are Thai people because of the culture, they respect the teacher, but in the Western, they will leave the class. In the Eastern culture like us, in Indonesia also, they will stay there, but their mind is not there. I used a, a term like a lantern in the harbor. There is a house, there is a lamp, the lamp is on, but nobody is there. That's our student now. They want to innovate. They have entrepreneurship DNA. They don't, want, they don't want to become teachers anymore. They want to create a startup to collect teachers and then get the money. See, I have a startup myself. Yeah, Call, calling for tutors. I develop it myself, but I cannot code. I use a student from computer, I give the ideas. And I got a lot of funding for that. This is the characteristics. The idea is that, ladies and gentlemen, if you teach your students the same way like what you had in the past, then you are not looking and accommodating their characteristics. Now, suppose that they are going to graduate and look for jobs. And then you are teaching them to be an accountant, a clerk, for example, sitting in front of the computer, doing some calculation, and then when they graduate, the job is not there because it has been replaced by a robot. In Indonesia, a tall, a tall person is no longer anymore. It is replaced by machine. You just tap the cashless uh, card and then you can pass the toll. So if you prepare your students, if you don't prepare your students, then they are not ready for the future. Now, what are the characteristics of our today's learners? They are Gen Z. I highlight some of them. They are highly connected. Even now, you are chatting. You are recording me, maybe. You are watching Facebook Live of the conference. You are chatting with someone else. And other things, other things. They are highly connected. But how can they concentrate to you? How can they engage, fully engage to you? Uh, that's the main question. They easily adapt and adopt. And the most important thing is that they generate contents. You have to teach them not to reproduce other people's contents, but to be creative to generate their own contents. I will skip this one. Okay, now you know that your students are very good in using technology. They can use Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, games, and so on. But it doesn't mean they know how to use technology effectively. That is the job of the teacher. This is an exact example. I always use this one. What do you mean all my facts are wrong? I copied everything straight from the internet. Are the students doing this? <laughs> or even the lecturers? It's hard. It's hard for English, right? So the student did not understand that what he did is called plagiarism or academic misconduct. So they can be very good in searching from Google, but they have to be taught also how to be critical, to synthesize information, and not to copy and paste. There are so many theories. One of them, which is newest, it's called connectivism. Connectivism means that you are using your connections at the moment to learn. At the moment, you are connected to your Facebook. You update your status and then your friends comment it and so on and so on. You, if you are more into a Twitter, then you go to Twitter. If you are more into Instagram, you are in, into Instagram. If you are into the three of them, you can also deal with them. Surprising, right? 
Another example is that you are like zombie playing smartphone like this. How come if someone is passing through you and then you can simply sliding like that? Even though that you didn't look directly. That's amazing, right? That's amazing. So this is the example of connectivism. So you have to build a personal learning network. You can learn from Khan Academy, you can learn from YouTube, you can learn from Quizlet, you can learn from uh, TED Talks, you can learn from blogs, which is a, a good one, you can learn from websites, journals, so many things. Our students are good in searching, but they are not good in synthesizing the information. Now, Vlog is very famous in Indonesian context, and especially through the young, young people. It's a video blog. In the past, blog is when you write something and then you post it. But now, people don't like to write anymore. They record like what you did just now, and then you post it. And then you can get money, even. It's very trending, especially in Indonesia. Many young people do prank video. Their salary in a month, if they have two million subscribers in YouTube, they can buy a car every month. As, uh, an undergraduate stu student, compared to the lecturer who has a lot of debts to build a house, for example. Okay? Our students must be prepared to face the future. I'm interested in using uh, something very practical. So I've already talked about something very big, and then I'm trying to use it into something practical in vocational context. That is how to use Flog to improve communication skills, and then in the end, eventually, they can be ready for the future. It takes time. Before that, I'm going to talk a, a bit about pedagogical framework. Some of you probably are familiar with this. There are so many pedagogical frameworks, especially when you use technology. One of them is called technology pedagogical knowledge, content knowledge. You call them TPEC. In the past, it's only PCK. Pedagogy means the teacher know how to teach how to teach. Content means the teacher know what to teach. With the development of 21st century, now you can integrate technology into P and C. The question is that, is the teacher or the students can integrate it very well? If you can see the one given by Chai Kohen Sai in 2013, you can see that Technology deals with the knowledge of using technology into your uh, activities. Pedagogy is how, content is what. You can also combine the technology and pedagogy. You can combine technology and content. You can combine three of them until you be, it becomes TPEC. That is, knowledge of using various technology to teach and or represent and or facilitate knowledge creation of specific subject content. For example, knowledge of how to use wiki as a communication tool to enhance collaborative learning in social science. That is TPEC. This is the big picture. Have you seen this one? Some of you probably seen this one. So basically, you have technology, you have pedagogy and you have content. And then the one inside, the green one, is TPEC. But be careful. You have to pay attention to the dots outside. They are called contexts. So your context will determine your TPEC. Are there any pedagogical frameworks outside TPEC? Yes. I will, I will share some of them. One of them is called Summer, presented by Ruben Putendura. A simple idea is that 
whether you use technology just to substitute the lesson, whether you use technology with some modifications in augmented and modification, and the last, whether you want to use technology so the students can create something new. That is rare definition. Is there any other? Can you integrate summer into TPAC? Yes. Summer can only go to T part, where you can grade the technological insertion and then combine with how to teach and what to teach. Is there any other pedagogical framework? Yes. Another one is called RED. Stands for whether you want to replace the lesson using technology, whether you want to modify something with technology, and then whether you want to transform, transform your lesson. Can you combine RED and SUMMER? Yes. Replace will be in substitution, amplify will be in A and M, and transform will be in redefinition. It's only different terms. Pick red is another one. The idea is whether you want to aim for passive, interactive, and creative students with the use of technology here. Your aim must be on the top right. You want your students to be creative, and the technology is able to transform the lesson. Is there any other pedagogical framework? Yes. Another one is called UT, A -U -T, U -T -U -T. A simple idea of this is that you cannot simply use technology and then expect a change. No. Some of you are interested in technology and then you just pick one very sophisticated tool and then expect there will be a change. No, you have to consider so many variables behind the context. For example, if it is a class, you have to consider gender, you have to consider environment, you have to consider facilities, socioeconomic background, and so on and so on. The next one is a modification of UTUT. It's called UTO2. Basically, it has more variables to consider. You got dizzy already now? Yes? Now let's play. So I did a simple research. This is actually a part of my bigger research. So this part is looking from the student's perspective. I'm working on the pre-service teachers and also in-service teachers. So I combine all of this later together. So this is using a classroom action research on 30 st students of vocational schools. And then I'm, uh, I use speaking test, rubric, TPEC survey, and focus group interview. Now, <clears throat> the result consists of three things. The classroom action research, the TPEC framework, and the interview result. So basically, I'm using a mixed method type. Look at the classroom action research. So in cycle one, the teacher are basically asked the students to perform in the classroom. Yeah, speaking performance. And then basically, because we have a criteria of success of 75, then the result of the first classroom action research did not achieve that criteria of success, meaning that we need to perform another cycle. In second cycle, we tried uh, a different one by incorporating flog. So students are asked to go to tourism objects in Bali because we have so many tourism objects, and then they record themselves and then create uh, their own version of promotional uh, video of tourism objects in Bali in the form of flog. Flog is different to a very uh, what is that, formal video. It is more informal, and then students can have fun with that. Uh, at the end, students score increase into 79. So basically, there, is an there was an increase on the car result. This is a simple res research, actually. Now, I would like to look at the TPEC. 
So basically, I want to know where the students know technology, know the content they are, they are doing, and know how to present the content using technolo technology. Before that, I'm looking at the computer connection at home, and then whether the school has computer connected to the internet, and then the smartphone connected to the internet. Basically, they have smartphone, 100% with connection. And then I'm looking at attitude. They need smartphone. They use it for study. And then they are allowed to bring it to the classroom. In some schools in Indonesia, smartphones are not allowed, which is difficult because they are afraid students access uh, negative things. Yeah. And then they agree that it increased their eff effectiveness and so-so with whether the technology make it easier or not. Now let's look for types of software that they have been using at the moment. They use email, they use PowerPoint, they use social media the highest, pretty normal. But then they don't use online stickies, for example, like Padlet, are you familiar with Lino, Padlet, and so on, yeah. They don't use cartoon creator, for example, but they use blog a bit there. So this kind of combination of ability will bring about uh, the next project on vlog. Now look at the TPEC result. I'm using a simple statistics here, looking at ideal mean score and ideal standard deviation. So, For category, for TPEC, I found the result that the student's TPEC is neutral. In technology, I found that their technology ability is high. In content, their ability is very low. They don't know what to say in the, in the flow. And in pedagogy, their ability is average or neutral. And the last for the combination of technology content, technology pedagogy, and TPEC, their ability or what they think of themselves is average. What does this mean? Look at this one. The result is in line with several theoretical and empirical results. They are very good in technology because they are young people, but they don't know what to put in the video. They are okay with putting the content and the pedagogy, but they are, they are okay with the others too. What does this mean, everyone? So I conducted a, a further study to dig more about the meaning. So the interview result confirms several things. The first one is that they agree that technology is very important. That's very common. Because without technology, they said they cannot live. Yeah? They have, to, have been, uh, to be connected 24 hours. They think that FLOG is appropriate to help them. So FLOG is chosen, was chosen compared to the other technological tools. Because they can play around with video, they can put the contents in a fun way, and it provides opportunities to express and increase their language abilities. The problem is that when they are given themes, they need to think sometime of what kind of content must be put into the vlog. And they also face some challenges when creating the materials. A very technical issues like lighting, because they record it when it is cloudy, for example, or when it is dark in the night. So they, they have to think of that one. Sound also. Sometimes they, the record is very shaky, and then the wind's sound is coming in. So they need very technical uh, abilities to solve these kind of problems. 
What can I suggest and conclude from this one? <coughs> Flog is only one tool, but it can be very effective to help your students to put what they understood through the lessons into something uh, in the form of product-based knowledge. They, they understand the lessons that the, the student, uh, sorry, the, the lecturers taught them to them, and then they will be asked to create something. That's the idea of learning. So they don't, you don't ask the students to memorize only, but using their understanding, create something. That's the idea. You can use technology for that. Technology doesn't mean always something very sophisticated. They can use paper and pencil too. That's technology, but it's up to them. They have very high perception or uh, what is that opinion on technology, but then they think that it is okay not to use or use technology uh, when they integrate the contents and pedagogy into their products. What I can suggest from this, lecturers or teachers can think of using FLOG as one way to help the students improve their speaking ability. There are many other ways, I believe. Teacher can also involve technology, but before in integrating technology, think of the pedagogical framework underlying that one. And then the teacher must make sure the students understand what he is teaching before the students create their products. I think that's all that I can share. But before that, you have your video, right? If I ask you to create something from the recording just now, is it going to be easy for you or not, or challenging? Why? Recording is easy, but putting them or creating them into something meaningful based on the themes needs time. That's what happened with our students now. So the job of the lecturer or teacher must make sure the students understand the materials and uh, make sure the students are able to put everything that they understand in terms of contents and how to present the materials in a better way. That's what uh, the point is. Okay, I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. And if you have any comments, inputs and questions, time is yours now. I hope there is no question. Any inputs probably or just comment that you need to speak shorter, for example. <laughs> yes, hi. You, you already asked a lot, yeah? <laughs> so can, uh, can you please share how you instruct the student to create a B-block? based on the framework. Yes, thank you. The instruction uh, for the students to create a flog. So basically, the procedure is like this. So you, uh, you, you taught contents, and then ask them to create a dialogue, a storyboard, and then ask them to perform without video first. And then, once they already understood the materials, for example, it is about uh, presentation of uh, advantages and disadvantages of going somewhere or going to a tourism object. And then the teacher in, explained to them uh, about the concept of presenting advantages and disadvantages by looking for materials, looking for similar ideas and then putting them together and then distinguishing which one is advantages and which one is not, and then after that, they must create their own version of the materials. And then you can give them a list of tourism objects or other places, and then 
they Google any information about that, that place, those places. And then they then uh, look for uh, any information from the websites uh, about that tourism place, where the, the, the plus of the, the place uh, or the minus of the place. For example, if it is a waterfall, what is good to go there is you can, you can refresh your mind. But is what is not good or disadvantages to go there is that if you are having a leg problem because you need to go upstairs and downstairs. So things like that and then they have to create storyboard and then they have to practice uh, taking roles because someone will be the reporter, someone will be the presenter, at least like that. And then uh, you ask them to go to the place and then come back with the results. Of course, there will be drafting and drafting. It's always like that. Yeah? And something technical also, you can, if you can, you can also teach them how to edit a video. If you don't know that technical skill, you just Google some YouTube videos. They learn from YouTubes now, not from the book. Hope that helps. Anyone else? Well, again, thank you. If you don't have any questions or inputs, you can still chat me. That's my email. Uh, if you want to get my number, I'm available after this. Uh, also with other information, if you want. Tin will know, Dr. Tin will know uh, a lot about me. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again in other conference. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Henry Santosa. It's your turn. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention so far. And if you have stayed with us this long, please stay a little longer. <laughs> so I guess uh, everyone here today, beside our passion for research, uh, most, most of us still teacher. We teach full-time, part-time, and uh, here are some students, and it means that they are going to be a uh, teacher in the very near future. And it's probably true that every one of us use uh, a simple trick uh, to motivate our students in class. Uh, it's like giving them candy every, every time they have the correct answers for your question. So today we'd like to do a similar thing. But no worries, no candy. It's a lucky draw, no candy. Yeah, so, no candy, but uh, presents and gifts from uh, our dear sponsor, Macmillan Education and Cambridge University Press. So uh, now it's time for our round of uh, lucky draw, first round. And I would like to uh, invite to the stage Mr. Deng Hung Vig. Yeah, senior lecturer of Faculties of Foreign Languages, University of Technology and Education, to come to the stage and draw the first um, seven lucky numbers. And if your name, uh, your number, sorry, if your number happened to be called, so please come on stage to receive the gifts. Okay, so uh, people say that the early bird catches the worm, but as most of the early birds have flown away. <laughs> then the late staying birds are going to take it all. <laughs> yeah, seven numbers. LTT 071. Second time, 071. Flown away. One, two, two. One, double, two. Here, 
If your name, uh, if your number happened to be called, please come on stage. Okay, also flown away. <laughs> Two, three, one. Two, three, one. So, so I, I, I think that I don't have a very lucky voice. So I would like to invite Mr. Chung Batle to come here to continue the lucky draw. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, I want to call my number. <laughs> wow, uh, 152, 152. Anyone? 152? No one? Okay. Okay, one, two, five, one hundred twenty-five. Oh. <laughs> one zero two. No? Look, 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 one zero two. One eight two. Oh. Ah, it's still one, one seven two, one seven two, one hundred seventy two. Mister Who? Ah, oh, no, no. <laughs> ah, two. 28, 228, 228. Ah. Last one, yeah, please come to the stage. 228, right? Yeah. Quick, quick, quick. Uh, next number is 225, 225, 225. Mine is 200. <laughs> and the last one for me for me to read out is 136. 136. One seven zero. Oh. Any of you? No. Okay, please come. Okay, good. Two o oh, four. Good. Please come. Good. Lucky enough. 
Okay. 097. Is it okay? No. And how about Harry? <laughs> One, two, four. Yes? Two, seven, one. Good? <laughs> no. <laughs> and how about you? <laughs> okay. Oh, four, two. Okay, this come. You're lucky enough to find người được không? Okay, maybe the last two. One, one, one. <laughs> two, four, three. Good. Okay. And then the last one, right? Okay. Maybe this time we go to Stephanie. <laughs> one, nine, four. Yes? One, four, six. Oh, eight, five. Yes? Two, three, two. Good. Okay. Hey, 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 Thank you, Dr. Thu. Now I would like to invite on stage Ms. Nguyen Bích Phương, Marketing Representative from Macmillan Education to draw the next 10 lucky numbers. <laughs> so 10 more to go.
Congratulations, the lady. Nice to meet. Zero five eight. Zero two one. Are you there? Uh, are you here? Zero two one. Okay, I'll choose the next one. Double six. Double six. One nine two. One nine two. The next one. Two three three. Congratulations. One one three. One one three. Are you here? Seven six. Two zero nine. One six four. One six four. Okay. Twenty eight. Zero two eight. Thank you, sponsor. Thank you, Dr. Nguyen Dung Su. Ladies and gentlemen, if you happen not to receive any gift so far, so no worry, because here come our first prize. Yo! <laughs> Yo! There are 16 first prize. Yeah, so everybody will go home happy tonight. Yeah. 
Okay, the first, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Đỗ Thanh Tùng. Yeah, please come to the stage and uh, draw Nguyễn Thanh Tùng, I'm sorry. Uh, Nguyễn Thanh Tùng, please come to the stage and draw the first 16 lucky number. Uh, one, two, one. Two, seven, eight. No. Two, four, nine. Ah, uh, before two, seven. Eight. Yes, that's right. The new one, two, four, nine. No? Zero, three, seven. Two, one, nine. Two, two, three. Two, two, three. Now. O, eight, O. Okay. Next one. One, four, three. Uh, two, four, six. Two hundred and forty-six. Yeah? Okay, come here. Two, six. Five, two hundred and sixty-five. Now, two, five, one. Now, one, six, zero, one hundred and sixty. Two hundred and forty. Two four zero. Okay. One nine nine. Okay. Come here. Two nine nine. O seven nine seventy nine yeah ah uh, sixteen yeah sixteen one o seven one hundred and seven no zero two zero Chante. O four six forty six. O three nine thirty nine. No. One hundred and thirty eight. One, three, eight. Now. O seven, four. O seven, four. Yes. 
188 188 yes. 2 2 4 2 5 7 Two five seven. My two seven five. <laughs> one hundred and eighty three. One eighty three. Two two six. Two two six. Now. Two four eight. Zero nine eight. Ah, one o four. One zero four. Now two o seven. Now two seven five. Mine. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck, Hamdiya. Probably I would invite Dr. Jang Tengzin to come to the stage. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank one six three. One seven one. One seven one. One two six. One two six. Two nine seven. Two nine seven. Two nine sorry twenty nine twenty nine twenty nine please one nine one one nine one okay so uh, there is only one left let's hope one seven three One seven three. One four nine. One four nine. Two seven four. Two seven four. O nine O. Ninety. Okay, there's still hope. One six seven. One six seven. Eighty six. Eighty six. One hundred and twenty seven. One two seven. Forty. Four zero. Okay, I have a suggestion. So probably the last gift will go to the dean for his reading work. Huh? <laughs> Sixteen, one six. Two three six. Two three six. Oh. Okay. <laughs>
Thank you, sponsor. Thank you, Dr. Đặng Tân Tính. Thank you, everyone, and congratulations uh, to all the lucky today. <clears throat> if you don't win today, I, I think you are the very unlucky person in the world. Uh, uh, this is the easiest uh, to win uh, lucky draw. But it happen if not to win today, please come back next year. Uh, next year. I'm sure that you all obtained something today, right? Uh, it is time to thank all the resource people who make this uh, event possible. And may I invite Dr. Dang Tân Tín, the Dean of Faculties of Foreign Languages, uh, University of Technology and Education, to come to the stage to deliver the vote of thanks and concluding remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for bearing with us to the very last minute of the conference. It has been a full day of exciting sharing, interesting dialogues, engaging discussions. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to all of you for making this event a great success. I strongly believe that you can now set new light on incorporating new approaches, innovative methods, and effective techniques into your language teaching practice. Your research skills should have been sharpened. Your research motivation should have been double in size, and your research network should have been significantly improved. I also hope that the comments that you have made, the stories that you have shared, and the experience that you have exchanged can enable your colleagues to make a difference. Now, let's have a look at some simple numbers of the conference.
probably I need to wait a little bit for the next uh, phase of the uh, uh, slide. And now I would like to invite you to have a look at some of the scenes that we have never seen before. You did it, but then, but then you didn't see it. And now is the time for you to see it. I do hope that you have enjoyed the photos and the special moments. Uh, these, these photos will be uploaded on the conference website, and then you can get there and then uh, choose the one that you love. It is now my great pleasure to introduce to you the Language Teaching and Learning Today 2019. The event will be held in April or May of 2019 and also at our campus. I would like to introduce you to you the three speakers of the conference. The first speaker that I would like to introduce to you is Associate Professor David Crabb from Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand. <clears throat> Associate Professor David Crabb is currently the Dean of Faculty of Education, but he has been taking various jobs within the university. He used to be the head of School of Linguistics and Applied Language Studies. He used to be the acting Pro Vice Chancellor, and he was the designer of the English language program at Victoria, New Zealand. His research interests include second language curriculum and learner autonomy. 
the second presenter that I would like to introduce to you is Associate Professor Gero Murray from Okayama University, Japan. <clears throat> Associate Professor Gero Murray may be not uh, strange to you at all. He, he was the convener of the ILA Research Network on Learner Autonomy in Language Learning during five years. And, and he was also the president of Japan Association of Self-Access Language Learning during 2005 and 2010. He has widely published on learner autonomy. One of his recent books is Space, Place, and Autonomy in Language Learning. His area of research includes learner autonomy, social learning spaces, imagination, and semiotics of place. The third speaker that I would like to introduce to you is Dr. Nguyen Đức Dinh from College of Foreign Language Studies, Đà Nẵng University. Dr. Chen is currently the Fulbright Visiting Scholar at University of Washington. He did his MA in TSOM program at University of Queensland and a PhD program in Monash University. His research interests include second language teacher education, identity in language teaching, socio-cultural issues in language education, and social justice in education. So these are the three key presenters that we would like to invite you to listen to in the LTLT 2019. LTLT International Conference is tent tentatively organized in collaboration with other institutions and professional associations in the coming years. So if you are keen on working with us, Please share your interest, and we can make this event even much bigger next year. Once again, please allow me to express my appreciation to all of you for your great participation in the conference. Our special thanks are extended to IDP Education, Hello English Center, Dai Trung Phak Education, Macmillan Education, Cambridge University Press, and Cảnh Quang Vic for, for their generous sponsorships. I would also like to convey my sincere thanks to the excellent organizing team, the awesome conference volunteers, and all the sporting member staff for their enormous contributions to the event. Once again, thank you and see you next year. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Dang Tang Ting. It's now um, past 6 p.m. And the, the strong indication that this conference has been so successful. And this cannot be possible without our, uh, our amazing participants and everyone full attention. Thank you again for your presence and contribution and for us to have something to remember this wonderful event, we would like to invite you all on stage uh, for a group photos. Yeah. But last, last but not least, Kali informed you all that the conference certificate of attendance is now available at the reception desk to collect. Thank you again. And um, those who register for the city tour, please uh, remind. Uh, Please remember that the, the tour will start at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Before you leave, again, please come on stage and take the group photo with us, please.